Make up mine. Hey there, I'm Teal Opal, and in this video, I want to show you guys my cosmetic loadouts for each class in TF2, as well as my weapon loadouts to some extent. I know I said I wasn't going to make another TF2 video in August, but I recently completed a really fun personal TF2 collecting goal, and I feel like as of right now, my inventory is quote-unquote complete or as I see it. There's always more items I could buy in this game, but as of right now, I'm happy where my inventory currently stands. And in this video, I just kind of wanted to show off the loadouts I crafted for each class. Do you guys remember a few months ago? ago when I made a video talking about how I had two unusuals for each class and how I considered that a personal collecting goal? Well, yeah, things have changed. Let's talk about it. But before we begin, I'd like to note that this little video here was sponsored by Manscaped, the global men's lifestyle brand that's revolutionizing men's grooming. As you'll see from my loadouts in this video, I am a connoisseur of all things beard. However, even I know that without proper care and attention, sometimes body hair situations can get a bit unruly. That's where Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes in, featuring the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Trimmer. This sleek, ultra easy to use razor comes with all sorts of utilities to make your body as high hygienic as possible, including the new dual skin safe interchangeable blades. Start out with the longer and wider trimmer blade for a tough on hair, gentle on skin trim, and swap to the more precise, smoothness oriented foil blade to leave your delicate areas as bare as a heavy's head. Plus, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra comes complete with a USB rechargeable battery, RPM technology, improved LED spotlight technology for low light shaves, and it's even waterproof. The Performance Package 5.0 additionally comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 for troublesome nose hairs the Crop Smoother and Crop Preserver Aftershave Lotion and Deodorant, and even two free gifts in the form of the Ultra Comfortable Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 Travel Bag for easier transport. And here's the kicker. If you use code TEALOPAL at checkout, you'll not only receive free international shipping, but you'll also get 20% off this multi-layered deal. True story, I used to prefer a professional shave, but after partnering with Manscaped, I don't see myself paying for a cleanup anytime soon. Thanks, Manscaped. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video, and remember, Remember to use the code in the description or in the pinned comment to save 20% off your order and earn free international shipping. All that said, onto the video. So, let's start with my scout loadout. As you can see, this is my generic default scout loadout, the one that I am most inclined to play if I'm not doing anything silly. Starting with cosmetics, the fuel injector I wear as a filler cosmetic on scout. My loadouts in TF2 tend to be hat, coat, or shirt, and then what I call a filler cosmetic. So, a beard or a metal or something like that. And I used to wear this item, the rainbow heart on all of my classes who didn't have a third cosmetic. But after I got the duck journal, which in case you don't know, it's about, t it's about 12 keys and it occupies your class's metal slot as basically a fourth cosmetic. So I had to stop wearing a metal on all my classes, so I ended up getting a filler cosmetic for each of them. For Scout, it ended up being the fuel injector, just because I think gas masks look really cool as a character design trait. I really like Mr. Foster from Killing Floor, for example. But yeah, I ended up going with the fuel injector for my Scout loadout, so I wear that on all of my Scouts, regardless of what their other cosmetics are. As for the unusual, this is obviously a Jellyfish Hunter brimmed bootlegger. I did have a Bubble Breeze brimmed bootlegger until recently, but I ended up doing away with it to get this one. And I like this one a lot more. I think it just looks more unique and interesting. And I like the jellyfish effects way more than Bubble Breeze. For weapons, you'll be seeing these on a lot of my scout loadouts because I generally like to run Scattergun, Pocket Pistol, or App Assassin. My Australian Scattergun, Miss Charlotte, its name and description is a reference to Elfelt Valentine from Guilty Gear, who is my main character in Guilty Gear Strive. Her gun is called Miss Charlotte, and the description, Are You Brave Enough to Be a Fool, is a lyric from her character theme, Action that I actually really, really like. I was asked what Guilty Gear character theme is my favorite, and I said extras changed my life because I was a different person before listening to that song and after. I believe I've had Are You Brave Enough to Be a Fool as my Discord status since I first listened to it. And this Australian Scattergun is in the rotation on a lot of my scout loadout. For the second one, we've got a similar loadout here, except for the Smitty Werbin Jaegerman Jensen's number one hat, a haunted ghost bonk helm. The bonk helm was actually my first ever unusual. It was a bubbling one that I ended up selling to buy the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, but it's always held a special place in my heart for that reason, so I've always tried to have one whenever TF2 is in my game rotation. I actually didn't name this thing, this is a Spongebob reference that wasn't consciously mine, but I thought the name was so perfect that I ended up keeping it even all this time later. As you can see, weapons are the same, except for the Gwimbly gun, and this is actually one I stole. I saw someone in-game who had their soda popper renamed to the Gwimbly gun, and I don't know what it is about the soda popper, maybe because it has the same purple that Gwimbly has in his color scheme, but I just thought this was really funny 
thing in, ended up stealing the name from myself. And the last cosmetic here that's going to be on all my scout loadouts is the Flapjack. I am fortunate enough to have a strange Flapjack. I think the Flapjack just looks incredible. It's a great all-purpose scout loadout. And the fact that it's designed as a reference to a really good movie helps that even more. For the third scout loadout, we have my gimmick scout loadout. This is generally the one I'm going to bring if I'm being a bit silly and playing suboptimally on purpose. As you can see right now, we have the shortstop equipped and the Criticola. I think because most recently when I used this loadout, I was recording footage for the precision weapons video. But I've got my recently unlocked Delicate Devastation, uh, Bewitching Bugs Commonwealth Commando. That is a lot of alliteration. I really like Bewitching Bugs. I know it tends to glitch out a lot, but I think when it works, it's a very pretty effect. And I think the Commonwealth Commando is a really nice hat, even though it basically is just a scout version of the field practice, which is a meta cat that already exists. I made sure to scoop this one up very soon after the summer update dropped. And my last scout loadout is going to be my uh, Force of Nature scout loadout, with obviously the unremarkable Force of Nature. It's only unremarkable because I sold an Australian one I had until recently to buy another item. Also got the iconic wind-up Tifa, because she's in there somewhere, if you catch my drift, and the candy cane. This is a really good scout loadout to bring if you really like self-sustain. You can kill people with the Force of Nature, get the free health pack drop from the candy cane, use the mad milk to extinguish yourself especially if you really hate pyros this is a great loadout to bring otherwise we have shocker my last scout unusual this is a kilowatt i believe this hat is called the fed fight in fedora i bought this one quite recently because i found it for really cheap on manco.store and i just kind of wanted to have it it was my fourth and final scout unusual so moving on to soldier who is very enthusiastically showing us his ass first up we have my naked snake loadout my metal gear solid 3 snake eater soldier loadout i know naked snake gets an eye patch midway through the game but he doesn't have one for the entire game and i thought the beard was more important to selling this look than getting the eye patch was and also a strange mistake in movember it is something i wanted to have as i mentioned in the ad read i really like beards in tf2 and this is not the last loadout you'll see one of them on otherwise i built this loadout specifically to remember i guess naked snake or big boss or whatever you want to call him from metal gear solid 3 the protagonist of that game i really like metal gear solid 3 i beat it for the first time quite recently in the past year or so and it just left an immediately strong lasting impact on me it quickly entered my top 10 favorite games of all time and not long after bought this unusual i thought i had a description on it but i guess not obviously it's hard carry i did have a jellyfish field one of these but i sold it to buy this and another unusual that i wanted at the time the stealth bomber a cosmetic i don't tend to think about too much but looks great in the naked snake loadout my australian rocket launcher is named final shine attack which is a dragon ball reference and we've just got some other items here for soldier that i don't tend to use as often i think i have the a rocket launcher uh the conqueror and either the escape plan or the disciplinary action equipped on all of my soldier loadouts. I don't tend to stray too far from my established trends on soldier. I think you'll come to see. Next up is my original soldier loadout. This is another sentimental one. I really like the Conquistador. It's been a hat I've liked for a very long time in my time spent playing TF2. I think it looks good and is easy to fit into loadouts, and it's also very cheap. I named mine to reference a series of animations by animator Joe Gran, who I'm not entirely sure what he's up to these days, but I think he's gone completely insane, and I probably don't want to be endorsing him. But back in the day, he made these really funny series of animations called Frumple Quest the Conquistador that I really liked when I was a kid, and I ended up naming this cosmetic to sort of reference those. As you can see, we've also got another gas mask on Soldier. As I mentioned on Scout, I think gas masks look cool. And we've got the Brawling Buccaneer, which similar to the Flapjack is just a great fundamental all-purpose coat that I think looks good in a lot of loadouts. As for my original, this was actually a gift from a suspiciously moist carpet, a former very high-tier TF2 trader who's been on my Steam friends list for a very long time. I mentioned I wanted one of these for Christmas as a joke in an old Q&A video, and they actually sent me one, which is really cool. I believe since then, Carpet has unfortunately lost their inventory to an unfortunate scamming or phishing method, but they were still kind enough to get me this original either way, and I'll always appreciate that. Also, Poison Cocktail. This potent poison disciplinary action is named in reference to Poison from Final Fight, who is the objective hottest video game character in existence, and I will not be hearing anything back on that. Also, I know what you're gonna try and tell me, and trust me, it does not change my opinion. She uses a whip in Street Fighter and in Final Fight, and obviously because this item was a poison theme loadout, I thought I'd name it in reference to one of her supers from Street Fighter 4. Next up is my Wacky Soldier loadout. Similar to my Scout one, this is a loadout I wear when I want to be a bit, you know, a little bit suboptimal on Soldier. In this case, I've just got the direct hit equipped, but sometimes I'll whip out things like the Liberty Launcher, the Airstrike, the Cow Mangler on this loadout. This is the loadout I tend to run when I'm not playing Soldier the way that I would personally describe as optimally. As for the loadout on this one, you 
guys saw this one in plain view in my precision weapons video. I made an SFM of this soldier loadout after he got himself killed by having a pyro reflect a rocket into him. I wear the trench warfarer on this loadout, which is a cosmetic I actually really like and would probably wear more if I didn't have the strange brawling buccaneer. The bruiser's bandana, which I bought specifically for a sniper loadout we'll show off later, and the loathsome goo, which I went through a brief fling on Steam where I was aliasing as the adjective noun, so I'd be the wretched bog, the fetid soil, the decadent nectar, the loathsome goo, and when I bought this hat, I just really liked the goo effect on it, so I ended up naming it that. I believe the slime is actually the reason I bought this hat. I know it's super low tier, but I think it's quite funny. And lastly is my Simon Belmont soldier. I wore this loadout specifically to resemble not really Simon, but more Julius and some other Belmonts and later in the Castlevania series when it got a bit more anime. That's why I have it painted white. That's why I have the war cloak on because those Castlevania characters tend to wear very long flowing coats or capes. And I thought the unusual effect looked really funny on this one. The name is actually a Bloodborne reference, which doesn't do closely align to the Castlevania theme, but I thought it worked otherwise. The Australian Black Box, its name is a reference to Big Top Burger, which is a series of indie animations on YouTube by Worthy Kids that I really enjoy. You're rehousing my gorgeous box? It's actually not my only Big Top Burger reference item name. And as you can see, I've got a very controversial loadout equipped uh, in this part of the video. This is actually because I'm working on a video on and off that has to do with this loadout. So keep that in mind before you comment that I'm using Tonk Black Box. Next are my Pyro loadouts, and Pyro is honestly one of my least liked classes in the game. I really don't like playing Pyro, and they're never my first choice of class to pick in the game. So my Pyro loadouts are a little less organized and thought out than my loadouts for previous classes. I don't have any Australiums for them, for example. And even though I do have Unusuals, they're on the less impressive side, all things considered. My flamethrower's name, Bond of Flame, is a Kingdom Hearts reference. Not the only one of my Pyro loadouts, actually. The Scottish Hammer. This entire item was actually a gift that I got about a year ago. Go. Just a random donation from someone sending me items on Steam. But I've used it ever since then. It's a great, I, I like the power jack and the fact that this is factory new on a skin I like. With a funny name that it came with, the boo. It, it's cool. I really like this one. I can't remember who donated it, but you know who you are. The Foster's facade I obviously wear because like I said, I do like Mr. Foster from Killing Floor and I think gas masks are really cool on fictional characters. I specifically like this specific model of gas mask. I don't know what its history or what country it's from is. I just think it looks cool. And my perennial pet Petals Brim of Fire, which I think is one of the hats that Perennial Petals looks the best on. It's a very horizontal, unusual effect, so having it on a very wide-brimmed horizontal hat just matches really well. Next up is my The Fury Pyro loadout. This one is obviously another reference to Metal Gear Solid 3. The Fury is my favorite boss from that game. I know the end and the boss are obviously much more lauded bosses, but I just love the fight against the Fury. I think it's so cool. And I wanted to get a bubble pipe for Pyro to be my Fury hat, but those ended up being way more expensive than this otherwise limited invasion hat. I believe this hat's called the Head Full of Hot Air, so I ended up getting this hat, naming it the Fury, and making its description a reference to one of the Fury's quotes from that game. For reference, he's just a Russian spaceman who fights with a flamethrower, so I made my Pyro a spaceman who fights with a flamethrower. I thought it looked cool. Next up is my Street Fighter Pyro. I actually don't have the dedicated Street Fighter coat for Pyro, just because I don't think it looks as good as I wish it did when comboed with the Firefighter hat. The name of this one is a fight game reference, Third Strike, baby. Not the first or last fighting game reference we'll be seeing in this video. And this is also my designated combo pyro loadout with the Degreaser, Maverick Flare, another Kingdom Hearts reference, and Tsubata.1, which is the name of a song from the No More Heroes soundtrack that plays specifically when you fight a boss who uses a weapon that is half a flamethrower, half an axe. So I thought that worked really good as a reference to name a pyro axe specifically. And my last pyro loadout is my whatever the fuck I want pyro loadout. This one has no theme. I just think it looks funny. We have the archery victim by, I actually can't remember the name of this hat, but I got it with this cool archery unusual effect. I think the unusual effect is called ice struck, but I can't for a, oh, there it is right there. I was going to say, I can't remember the name of the hat, but it's right there. It's called the impact impaler. Also got the lunatics leathers, which is another, it is all purpose coat cosmetic that I really like. The flamethrower, the phlogistonator, I have named in reference to bloodborne. This is actually before they added the amygdala unusual effect to TF2. I named this amygdala and made the description have mercy on those poor bastards because amygdala is the name of like an old god from bloodborne that you fight is a really climactic boss fight and i named the item in the description in reference to that because the flog is kind of a boss fight for the enemy team if you use it right if that makes sense 
Okay, so I just recorded the entire Demo Man section of this video, but didn't notice I wasn't recording, so we're gonna make this one pretty quick. My Demo Man loadouts tend to be pretty universally unthemed in general. The Souls of Stuntman Pass, the Bone Zone Thunderdome, is a very cheap, unremarkable, unusual, but one that I really like. The Man of the Seven Seas is a really great coat for Demo Man. One of the only genuinely good coats in his loadout, as far as I'm concerned. And I think this one just looks really nice. It is limited, which means it's like $30 at the minimum, but if you want to shell out for it, it is a nice coat. Other Otherwise, this is my pure stock demo man loadout, complete with the special festive skinned, uh, strange specialized killstreak grenade launcher, which was a gift from the same guy who sent me the power jack from early. Next up is my demo night loadout, and would you believe me, this is the only loadout I wear when I do demo night. With the song of the night unusual, the man of the seven seas again, the dark age defender again. If you ever see this guy on your server with this unusual effect, silver serenade on this hat, this coat, using these items, then that's me, certifiably. I really like the nightbane brand as a Bloodborne fan, I'm kind of inclined to like Van Helsing S Cosmetics, and I think with Silver Serenade specifically, it looks really great, how the unusual effect just kind of trails around the brim of the hat. I think it's very nice. Cut from a similar cloth is my other kind of Pilgrim Van Helsing Demo Man loadout, which is with the Plastered Pilgrim. The Blizzardy Storm Carousers Capotain, I believe the name of this hat is, with the Unforgiven Glory, which I wish I had room for in some more loadouts, but I want it to generally be visible, and with any of these other cosmetics, I don't think you would really be able to see yeah. This is, again, another beard cosmetic I really like. I just like beards in this game. And otherwise, this is my general suboptimal, but I play better with Demo Man loadout. This is the crutch Demo Man loadout that I like to run when I want to do good as the class, but no, I'd be making competitive players very angry. I always name my Iron Bombers. I use the name tag on this. This is something I've done since I was very young. This is a meme that started when I wasted one on purpose to piss off a friend, but I thought it was so funny I ended up carrying it all these years later. The Scottish Resistance, an item I've hyped up in previous videos that I really un ironically like. I prefer this thing to the stock Sticky Bomb Launcher, genuinely. I don't think it's objectively better. I think the Sticky Bomb Launcher is kind of bullshit overpowered, personally, but that's neither here nor there. And the bottle, which I think is generally just the best Demo Man melee to use on an explosive oriented Demo Man. And lastly, is the, what I call, my preferred Teal Opal Demo Man loadout. Obviously, with devastating doubloons, the Treasure Trove Blast Bowl. This is a really nice effect. It can get pretty expensive on the right hat, but on the Blast Bowl, it's only like 10 keys, I think. Uh, and I call this my preferred Teal Opal Demo Man loadout, because prior to trying to get good with the Stock Grenade Launcher and the Sticky Bomb Launcher, this is THE Demo Man loadout I ran. I went a very long time in my current, like, 13 years playing TF2, where I did not use the Sticky Bomb Launcher. I always ran the Iron Bomber and the Tide Turner, which I'm sure is bound to make someone very angry. I do not do this anymore, but I still like to revisit this loadout every now and then either way. Next up is the big one, which is obviously my heavy loadout. And if you think this one heavy loadout is pretty expensive and crazy looking, you have no idea. You see all this purple text? We'll get to that. I also just realized I forgot to rename this. Also, I just realized I forgot to rename this. I did not put this name or this description on this item. I bought this from Marketplace.df and it had this name, but it's pretty funny and now it's immortalized in a video, so I guess I gotta keep it. Either way, this is my default ass Teal Opal loadout. The loadout that's in my profile picture and in my SFMs and stuff. This is Teal Opal. This is Teal Opal the Heavy, just me, the guy, the character in the game that I use to represent myself, my Sona, whatever you want to call it. But, this is a very specific version of Teal Opal, because this is actually my red team heavy. On blue team, I switched to the, where is it, where is it? The green energy one. I know it's really cringe and embarrassing to have dedicated red and blue team versions of your preferred class, but I was not going to have two iconic YouTuber unusuals and not use both of them. What's the button to switch to blue team? Here it is. Yeah, this is my, uh, this is my iconic blue team heavy. If you see this guy on blue team, he's me, and if you see this guy on red team, then he's me. As for names, the name of this item is in reference to the fact that I used to quit TF2 a lot before I grew out of that and just realized if I was feeling tired of it, I could just take a break and play something else rather than making a big deal out of quitting. The wheel in the sky on the star platinum is a reference to JoJo. Obviously, stand names in that series are references to music, and the star platinum is a JoJo reference, so I named mine a reference to a song I really like, which is Wheel in the Sky by Journey and a well-groomed, respectable gentleman, I believe was actually the name I bought this beard with, but it just kind of stuck, and I kept it around, and I like it now. The item names are similarly uniform. Paradise, in the description, Gotta Find the Exit, is a No More Heroes reference that I feel is just definitive and, like, important enough to be the name of my main gun on my main class. Spicy Chicken Sandwich is because Spicy Chicken Sandwiches with no mayo, no mayo, 
are my favorite food and destroy freeze is another no more heroes reference there's a boss in that series named destroy man whose attacks are all destroy and then a word so destroy shock destroy beam stuff like that and i named this one in reference to him the description is also one of his quotes which i think is double funny when you kill someone using the holiday punch after a stun with this thing some other heavy item names i have include god bless the ring which is a reference to a very bad ps1 fighting game with a really badass name big rig and jesse which is a home movies reference and grizzly man which is a reference to a very fucked up documentary about a man who died horribly to some bears look it up next up on my next heavy loadout we've got the what i call the stealth heavy loadout this guy likes to hide around corners in the darkness he doesn't even let you see his face he's that stealthy i really like this loadout because this is one of the only ways you can turn heavy into a fully faceless merc the polar bear with the circling heart and usual effect i really like combined with the bruiser's bandana just looks really nice really gives heavy this mysterious spec ops faceless smirk kind of look and the heavy heating with the right style goes a long way in imparting a sort of dark militaristic look obviously you've got the cool sex gun this is the gun that kills you a total diversion from the very pretentious and uh definitive name i gave my minigun just gave my tommy slob a very silly name kind of to uh, exposit how i feel about both of these weapons individually as well as eternal dragon shenron smell of the game which is my unusual minigun this one's name and description is a guilty gear reference finally we have uh, Davidic Flux, which is an Overwatch reference. Something that I would not have done had I not renamed this item when I did. I was having a very brief Overwatch phase and specifically really like Sigma, so I named this item a reference to his ultimate voice line when he uses Gravitic Flux in that game. Next up is another heavy loadout. This is my Vacationer Heavy. This is similarly to the Scout and Soldier loadout, just the heavy loadout I use when I'm fucking around. As you can see, I have the Buffalo Steak and the Killing Gloves of Boxing equipped on this loadout. I think I was using this in Medieval mode, which is why I have these loadouts that's equipped on it and again i did not name this this came this way please don't cancel me we also have the life of the office party disco beat down unusual effect with the wild west whiskers if you combo these items they look really nice together it looks like the wild west whiskers is the hat that's unusual which is a combo i uncovered a long time ago and i think looks really nice we also have my just total nonsense heavy loadout this one does not have a theme i just bought this unusual because i thought it looked cool and i just threw some cosmetics on to go with it and the reason this one does not have a theme is because i actually have two more heavy unusuals. I've also got the bootlegging brute, which I bought right over the summer update because I wanted to have an unusual of the new heavy hat, and it wasn't too terribly expensive. And the dedicated Resident Evil 4 reference, what are you buying, what are you selling? This hat is very cheap, so I don't tend to wear it often, but I did want to have a dedicated Resident Evil reference in my inventory, so I bought this item to fit that need. Next up, we are moving on to Engineer, and for whatever reason, he has some of my most expensive unusuals in the game. I have a lot of really rare, really valuable engineer unusuals. But starting with my battle engineer loadout, we've got Mr. Cool Ice, the shotgun that I got from my friend Classy Javelin that I named after a very funny vintage meme. I also just kind of run the pistol on default engineer. I run the pistol on most of my engineer loadouts, honestly. I really don't like using the Wrangler. And we've got RuPaul's Jag Race, the strange Jag that has a lot of sentry kills, but not too many regular kills. Other engineer wrenches I have really aren't that special. The Power Glove, this item's like $400 but that's really all that's special about it. Power Glove, now you're playing with Power, is the only other one I have renamed. And I don't even have an Australian wrench, because I rarely ever use the stock wrench. As for Unusual, this is the Big Stetson. The Spectral Wick Dust Bowl Devil. This item's name and description is, again, a Big Top Burger reference. And we've got just the Sleuth Suit on this loadout, which is a great multifaceted engineer item that you can really set the styles to fit any kind of look you want to go for. I personally want kind of a rugged cowboy look for mine, so I went for that with it. All around looks really good. Next up is my Pure Defense Engineer loadout with the Western Wraps, which is the item I used before they added the Sleuth Suit. And then we're on to use that on most of my other loadouts. Again, also, we have a beard on most of my engineer loadouts because again i like beards in this game once again pure defense so does all the defense stuff you'd expect for engineer the name of my pda the texas instruments ti 83 plus was actually a gift this specific unique pda was gifted to me many many years ago back in like my first run as a tf2 youtuber and i've kept it around ever since because like fuck am i paying for a strange pda and lastly we've got the unusual the train of thought with twisting lights i just think this thing is cute i know a lot of people really don't like it but if you're gonna call any tf2 class cute i think engineer 
here is the one you should do it with. And he's got the cutest hat, in my opinion. I really like this thing. Also, the name. All I can really say is, if this name pisses you off in the year of our Lord 2024, that may say more about you than it does about me or anyone who would like this name. You should get that checked out. Next up is my pure uh, mini century engineer loadout. Very similar to the previous one, just as the $400 strange gunslinger switched out in place of the Jag. We have the desk engineer on this loadout, which if you listened to all the previous section, you should know exactly why I have this. And this really cool unusual, Android 13, which I named after Dragon Ball Z, obviously. But this hat with this effect, Rainbow Reverie, I believe is one of two, and it was one of one when I bought it. And people have been coming after me for this thing. I've had at least two or three people friend me on Steam asking to buy this thing, and then being very dejected when I tell them that I don't want to buy it because it's one of my four engineer unusuals. And lastly, it's just another pure offense engineer loadout, this time with the Frontier Justice. And this one is the same as my first one with a cowboy theme set and everything, except this time I have the Morgun Marshal named Beyond's Embrace, which is another kind of old god, old entity horror kind of bloodborne thing, with the eerie kraken unusual effect. I just think this effect on this hat looks really nice. Something about it is just visually satisfying to me. I like the way this combo looks. Moving on to Medic, he's actually the class with the most uniform rules across all of my loadouts. I have specific item sets I only use on specific cosmetic loadouts using this class for no other purpose than to make my own life more difficult. This is my pure generic Medic set. Fucking everyone is wearing this Medic set at one point, it's super common. But I think it looks really cool with the orbiting fire and usual effect, the fact that you can't see his face, it just looks really neat. This is my pure meta Medic loadout. Crossbow, stock, uber saw, all good. This is the Medic loadout that I use when I want to win the game and want to play the most pure meta stock version of medic possible. Next up is my fuck it we ball medic loadout with the unusual effect named to reference Jinzo from Yu-Gi-Oh. I really like Jinzo, it's my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card. I literally have a framed Jinzo card in a picture frame on my desk next to my computer. I just think it looks really cool. So I tried to make this medic loadout to cosplay that Yu-Gi-Oh card Jinzo as much as I could with obviously the exposed brain and the gas mask. And gameplay wise, this loadout is the same as all of my other medic loadouts, except for the Solemn Bow. I really like the Solemn Bow. I've been using it more than the Uber Saw recently. I just think it's really fun and really cool, and you can't take that away from me. Next up is my pure battle medic loadout. This is, I believe, the only loadout in the entire game I have no strange cosmetics for. I could remedy that anytime, I just didn't before recording this video. I wear the snow capped on this one, because again, beard guy, with my pure non-meta battle medic loadout. I still like to heal people when I use this loadout, which is why I bring the quick fix, but otherwise, this is the loadout I'm using, the Solemn Bow to seek, scope out people's health, and then use the Blue Salger to clean them up. This is my, if you see this guy on the battlefield, he's running at you with his gun and not healing type of medic loadout. And lastly, is my Pope Medic with the In the Garden of Eden, the, I believe this unusual effect is called Musical Maelstrom, with the Ruffled Rupect. This is just my Pope Medic loadout, he's meant to look like a savior, religious figure kind of guy. And this is the same as my other medic loadout, except this is specifically the one that I run the Kritzkrieg on. Because the very first time I ever used this strange Kritzkrieg, I used it with this loadout, and I went absolutely huge. And I just kind of decided from that point on, anytime I use this loadout, I would be using the Kritzkrieg, or vice versa. Next up are my sniper loadouts, and he is actually, I believe, with exception to Scout and heavy. The only class I have more than four unusuals for. We'll talk about that. Starting with my Huntsman Sniper loadout. I really like running the Huntsman with the SMG. This SMG's name, specifically Minigun, was done for a previous old TF2 video I made that no one watched. But otherwise, we obviously have the Beard, Beard Guy, and the Birdman of Australia Catraz, which I think look really good together with the Huntsman to make this really cool sort of aerodynamic sniper loadout. And the Boastful Bushman, which is my renamed Wild Brim Slouch, with this unusual effect that I didn't know existed until I bought it. I did not know this unusual effect was in the game until I purchased this hat. As for the Wild Brim Slouch, I really like this thing. It's really cheap and looks really good. So you can get a lot of unusual effects that are quite high tier on this thing, super inexpensive. Next up is my Green Man Sniper loadout. I cannot repeat the name of this cosmetic in a video. Last time I did, I got demonetized, but this is generally the loadout I want to use when I feel like tryharding a sniper and really want to piss off one specific player. The name of this sniper rifle is done in reference to this. Lock this overhead is a 
taunting fighting game phrase people use to make fun of people for not blocking. And the description is obviously just the green gun. Otherwise, pretty similar to my other sniper loadouts. Next up, we have my Bloodborne Sniper. And this is actually the cosmetic loadout I bought the Strange Bruiser's Bandana for. I made this loadout specifically to resemble the Good Hunter from Bloodborne, which is very funny because there are a lot of Bloodborne items for Sniper on the workshop that just haven't been added to the game. But I ended up getting this item that I named Madman's Insight because that term, as well as the imagery of eyeballs, are core to Bloodborne's aesthetic. And I thought combined with these two cosmetics, they would look really well together. And I've got the Machina Inator. With this, I would body shot the entire Tri-State area, which is just a funny little Phineas and Ferb reference. And as you can see, almost exact 50-50 headshot body shot split on this thing if you go by the headshot kill strange counter, which is very fun. My last sniper loadout is my pure Jurati vacation sniper loadout. This is the guy that I bring the pissed on or pissed off Sydney sleeper with, the Jurati with, and the Bushwaka with. This is just the loadout I want to use and I want to run pure piss sniper. For some reason, I think the vacation sniper loadout, not unlike the engineer unusual from earlier, just looks really visually satisfying in a way that I really like. And I named the description a reference to a Zach Brown band song that I liked when I was younger. Trying to pay tribute to things I liked when I was a kid. But I did mention that I had a fifth sniper unusual, and that is because I actually unboxed this guy a strange, unusual, distant drift aim frame. When this unusual first came out, I added the only one, and it was selling for like $300, but nobody wanted to take mine for some reason, so I still have it all these months later, and it's now dropped, unfortunately, to around like 70 bucks, so I'm probably not doing away with it anytime soon. This will be a permanent part of my TF2 sniper identity. And lastly is Spy, and he has changed the most since my previous TF2 unusual showcase video. I do not have either of the unusuals I showcased in that video anymore. I have four entirely new ones for Spy, so let's talk about them. This is my pure try-hard Spy loadout, the one that all the edgy weeb Spy mains use. You know, we got the uh, Latrange named the Metal Gear Rising Revengeance reference, the Kunai named the Metal Gear reference, the uh, Dead Ringer named the Dracula Flow reference, and we've got just this funny criminal sort of Spy loadout. I know that the clipping on these two items specifically is disgusting, this looks really bad, but I think that adds to the comedy of like really pissing someone off using this loadout, and obviously we have I am dish by, which is a quintessential spy quote that we can never do without. Next up, we have my pure stock spy loadout. This is when I just want to play pure uninhibited default spy. The name of my knife is another Big Top Burger reference, specifically to the villainous team from that show's theme song, Friends in Low Places. The Ice Cold Assassin, which I love this hat and this unusual effect, Frosty Flavors. I can't show you it here, but it is team color. I think this thing looks so nice, specifically on blue team, that I wanted to get one specifically on this spy hat, because I just thought they would look really nice together. Otherwise, you've got the Le Professionnel, which is one of the only coats that doesn't either get completely covered up or clip horrendously with the covert covers, which is the hat I have. It doesn't look too great, but it looks better than it does on a lot of other loadouts, so whatever. And we've got Aristotle, it is kind of a filler cosmetic, once again, because I don't have room for a medal on spy anymore. Next up is my Snow Spy loadout, and fittingly, this is the one that I bring the Spicicle on. Pay no mind to the fact that the Diamondback is equipped. I tend to switch my spy gun on this loadout quite regularly. By the way, spaghetti, Aqua Dean Hunger Force reference. But yeah, I tend to run whatever gun I want on this loadout. This is just kind of my pure survival spy loadout. So I might use the Diamondback, might use stock, might use Latrange, whatever, what have you. This is just meant to be my snow spy loadout with a very cold bird. And my last spy loadout is the Your Eternal Reward loadout. I really like the Your Eternal Reward. I actually want the second episode of Merc's Munitions to be about it whenever I get around to making that. The name of this item is just a funny little joke making fun of like, I want to say gender phobic people, I guess I would call it. It's really funny to stab some really, really aggressive, like hyper masculine try hard soldier main. They hear a little poke, their body disappears. The spy does his gay little walk away. And this name is what they see in the kill feed. That's fucking funny. I've made some people really mad with this item. We've also got the hat, which is named in reference to the famous Heavy is Dead video, with the vivid plasma unusual effect, and the lurking Legionnaire, which is a cosmetic I wish I could fit into more of my loadouts, but I think it really only looks good with certain hats. <laughs>
And there we have it. The running theme you may have noticed that I was trying to keep on the down low for this video is that across all of my loadouts, the cosmetics are pretty uniform except for the hat. And the thing is, I have a unique hat with a unique unusual effect for every class. I currently own around roughly 50 unusuals, I think, and none of them share hats or effects except for the two capitalist cappers I have on heavy. This was exorbitantly expensive and time consuming to put together, but like I said, I do currently view my TF do inventory as complete. So unless I want to start buying more Australiums or reskins that I'm not going to use, this is where I wanted to be at in TF2 inventory wise by the time I was at around a year of making TF2 content. And I did it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you had a fantastic day before, during, and after watching. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video, and I'll catch you all later. Cheers, everyone.